Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we are coming back to Rooms of Wonder and we are going to do a little bit of work on the forest bedroom. A full disclosure, this was not meant to be today's video. The video that I wanted to do is something that's quite exciting but I'm relying on Royal Mail and uh, I'm at the back of the queue basically for all things that, are, that involve post uh, because I stay in the middle of nowhere let alone strikes and things. Today we are going to tackle our trees and perhaps the outside of this little portal window we'll see what we're doing for time and we are going to carry on using our Prismacolor pencils as always I will show you the colors in my swatch book so that if you don't have Prismacolors you can pick something else that is suitable so to get us started we're going to tackle these leaves along the top here so the the treetops the canopy and I am going to keep this fairly simple the first pencil I'm going to use is the light green which is this colour here so it's quite a, a, a spearminty type green it's you know heading towards a turquoise type green I'm also going to be using the true green which I would say is a step up from that which is this colour here and I would describe that as a, as a normal mint green and then lastly for our dark colour I am going to use the peacock green which is this one down here and again so I, I would say that's a, a dark bottle green but it's heading more into a, like a turquoisey teal colour rather than a yellowish type green so I hope that makes sense to you and we're just going to keep it at that just now when I come to do the tree trunks I'm going to be using a separate set of pencils so I will alert you to that at the time and kind of like I did last time, I'm quite keen to start on the areas where the light source is going to be important. So one of the really nice things about this type of image is we can show depth in these different parts of the trees by the colours that we use and how that we how we use them. There's going to be quite different examples of this in both areas where these candles are. So the likes of this one here, if we wanted to show that the candle is in front of of this section of the the foliage we can show the reflection so like the bounce light coming off of here and if we don't show that and make this dark it indicates that the tree area is nowhere near the candle so that's a really good way to trick the eye I want this section to show that it's near the candle so I'm taking my lightest green which is this light green unsurprisingly and I'm just going to create a sort of half like a semi-circle so very similar to the, what we did with the background and I'm just going to pop that down now notice I'm using the side of my pencil here I want this to be very very soft and then after that I can take the mid colour so we're just going through the steps here of lightest to darkest and that's the true green and I'm popping a layer of that down and I can join that up here now there is some dot work here up around this top part so again it's very very similar to what we did with the background I can pop a bit of my darkest green in over that dotted area like so and then we can start to work on this build it up and get it to where we want it to be so I'm going to go back to my, my latest green here so build up the colour a little bit so I deliberately chose this set of greens because they kind of tie in with the colour scheme of the background so although they are green they're definitely heading more towards that turquoise type colour and that's just going to tie in nicely with what's going on and I can bring that true green up over the top of the peacock green we can start to blend that together and marry this all up so it's up to you how dramatic you want to be with your colour changes and the transitions I would like to keep this fairly gentle because I want to be able to use these same colours in a different way on the different sections of the tree the trees that we can see so it's in my interests here to keep this reasonably subtle so just that wee section there and then I can grab this true green and we can build this up a little more it's a lovely colour so you can see how well that goes with our background and then just go back to my palest pencil now and work on the section nearest my candles so I'm assuming that you'd all like to know about the dinner dance that I went to um, which I talked about a bit in the last video it was an absolute disaster and I enjoyed myself about as much as I thought I would unsurprisingly right so this section here I'm kind of looking at it in terms of you know in relation to the background so I think here we're going to have a tiny little sliver of the latest green and then I'm just going to use the the mid green the true green the thing that made it bad was that the we ended up eating a lot later than we were supposed to and because of that everybody 
had had far too much to drink far too soon and there was a lot of people falling about and it was like nine o'clock uh, there wasn't really enough room to dance as well, which I'm not much of a dancer anyway, but uh, the, the the one Kayleigh dance that I did get up for with my friend, not Mr. Jem, my friend, um, we didn't have much room because he was really wanting to spin me around like, like fast uh, and he just didn't have room, so he was a little bit upset. I was slightly relieved, not going to lie. Uh, so we ended up coming away early. We left at like 11 o'clock and it was supposed to go until half past midnight. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a success. I'm quite glad to be away from it. <laughs> right, let's finish off this section of tree. So in this part here, we're far enough away from the light source now that we don't want to be using the lightest pencil. So I'm just going with the true green. A lot of effort for not much return, to be honest. Um, the food wasn't particularly good either. And I just, I mean, I really wasn't enjoying myself when Mr. James said to me at one point, and I think that was before nine, and he said to me, he said, you're not having fun, are you? And I said, no. <laughs> Like, can I go home yet? So, for all those people that keep telling me I need to get out more, there you go, I did it. Are you happy? Because it was boring. It's like, I could think, could think of a much better way to spend a Saturday evening. The drinks were so expensive as well. And it was um, the, the post-mix syrup, you know, this, this, this squishy Coke and Diet Coke. And it's just, it's awful. Like, it tastes awful. Uh, so that kind of ruined my Jack Daniels as well, so I wasn't very happy about that, but so expensive. And it's a shame because I'd heard reports that the food was really good and the food was awful, but part of the problem with that was that we were so late getting started because there were speeches and things like that. Um, we were so late getting started that that food had been plated and sat for for you know for a long time before it got to us but the menu was really old-fashioned as well and it, it really struck me because that kind of menu that served in a function suite the menu that was served was the menu that i was cooking and plating up as a function suite chef when i was a chef which was 20 years ago if they're if they're serving that kind of menu it's kind of old hat now <laughs> Anyway, that's not the point. So yeah, I was a little bit disappointed. Okay, there's some little marks here um, that indicate some sort of texture. And all I want to do is take my darkest green. But also as well, I'm going to add in some extra areas. So I'm just making wee semicircular shapes here with my, my darkest pencil. I'm using a medium pressure. I'm not pressing hard. And I'm just making very soft semicircles. I'm not doing anything fancy and I'm just going to add a few of those in just to give give us a little bit of extra oomph in this tree line here. So this section here is part of the same tree. So I'm going to carry on minus the, the lightest green on account of not being near the flame of the candle. So we'll get some of that down. We can just work away and get this one done. So this weekend, and again you're, you'll see this video on Sunday, so Mama Jem will be here by the time you see this video and she's staying for a week because Papa Jem is tearing up <laughs> tearing up the floor of their house and Mama Jem does not want nor need to be present for that so she's coming to stay up here at the cave for a week or so which will be nice because I haven't seen her for a little while so it'll be nice to have her around. I haven't seen her since the jam making incident. I don't think I ever talked about that either. Uh, we have a plum tree in our garden and uh, last year we decided to make plum jam which went very very well so we thought we would repeat that experience and uh, we we bought some extra jam jars because we didn't get round all the plums last year and some are very very high up and we can't reach them so we if we get them when they fall naturally before they start to rot then great mama jem says right i'm going to come up and we'll, we'll make this jam together and I was like, right, okay, sounds great, because I don't have a lot of time for stuff like that. And I was like, if you want to make the extra batches, then you're, you know, feel free to take it with you. Take it home with you, because you made it. So she said, well, I'll bring some extra jars. And I said, yes, you better had to. So I had about 27 or 28 jars, some from last year. She said to me, she said, I've got about a dozen. I will buy another dozen jars, because you can buy packs of pre-sterilised jars. Uh, she said, I'll buy another dozen and that should do us. So I was like, yeah, you know, like counting up in my head. I was like, that's going to be loads. That's going to be plenty. So there was 50 odd jars there. First harvest, harvest of plums would be the the ones that I could reach and Mr. Jim could reach on a step ladder and the ones that we could actually physically shake off the tree. So the ones that were ripe and ready to fall. And after that, we would get uh, one of the... Um, we would get one of the little loaders, uh, you know, like the Manitou 
use the the loader to you know someone would sit in the bucket and put the loader up and we'd pick the ones on the top and we'd do that as like a second batch so mama gem thought this was fabulous this was a great idea and uh, we decided we were going to go for it so uh the the day before mama gem came mr gem and i went outside and we picked up all of the plums that we could off the ground that weren't rotten and we started to shake the tree <laughs> got hit on the head twice by falling falling plum projectiles so that was fine and uh, I, I had kept back a few cardboard boxes uh, which I always have a steady stream of obviously just because of uh, because of the cave and stuff I was just piling them into this box and Mr. James shouted he said I think we're gonna have to bring bring out another box so that was fine so went and got another box uh, little did I know that earlier on in the day Mr. Jem had been out in the garden and he had uh, he had actually picked a big glass bowl full and put them in the fridge so we had the fridge was full our fridge is fairly big and it was full so when mama Jem came uh, she started prepping all these plums so we sat between us and took because you have to um take the stones out of them so uh, whatever size of batch it was mama gem and i sat and it took us quite a while to sit and take all these stones out and she's saying to me this looks like an awful lot of plums you know like it's going to make a big batch but the recipe had said it was something like um it made two kilos of jam so i said to, to her i said mom you're just gonna have to like try and see how much jam's in it Excuse me, I've got a broken pencil here. I'm just trying to rescue it. Um, as we all know, Prismacolors are great for breakages. Uh, I just try to sharpen it into a point so that I can do a bit more of this over here and in here. And um, yeah. So uh, yeah, anyway, so my, Mama Jem went, went on her merry way and she plonked herself in the kitchen. And she's she's actually, she's just always in the kitchen. When she comes to stay with us, she might as well just put her bed in the kitchen. She's always pottering about in there. But that's what she loves to do. That's her thing. And uh, yeah, so she... <laughs> She shouted through at one point because I was working, you know, I'm just like plodding away doing my doing my job, maybe editing a YouTube video or whatever every now and then. And uh, she shouted me, she's like, Jem, can you come through here a minute? And I thought, oh, she's needing a hand with something or whatever. And she said to me, she says, I can't lift the pot off the stove. And I'm like, well, what do you want to do that? I said, just take the jars over to the pan. And she said yeah but look at the pan so here's me and i toddled over to the stove now i have got a i've got a huge pot that i use for making uh, pasta sauce and i've got one for uh, making soup in as well both of these pots were full like i mean absolutely full to the to the brim with jam and that was it ready it had reduced down and she said what are we going to do with all this jam and i could see her face like she was panicking she said i don't even think the jars that we've got is enough to do that so we, we ended up uh, i i went into town and i managed to go to the ironmongers and they had jam jars so i packed i picked up a pack of six and then i thought i better take two just in case so i had 12 extra jars and i came back <laughs> and my mum's still desperately trying to shoehorn this plum jam into these jars and she'd run out of jars so oh, our first yield was something like 67 jars of jam and that was only like a third of the plums on the tree <laughs> so needless to say we uh, we ended up not taking a second yield because what are we going to do with all these jam jars uh, we couldn't give them to the food bank they won't take them um because uh like food safety standards so i've just had to like i did give them away to people <laughs> I've got jam coming out my ears. Uh, so yeah, that was that was a bit unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. Right, okay, let's let's think about <laughs> these layers. Uh right, okay, so I'm gonna look at this one now. And this is obviously above, but I want this to be in front of the light source. So the light source is going to be like shining up in behind there. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the, the darkest green pencil and I'm going to put use that as my base layer of colour. Um, so just just the way I would normally do, you know how I like to put a layer of colour down on something and uh, I'm going to do that across the whole tuft. This is like a little a little broccoli head. We've had a book before, what was it? that was when we were in Circle of Life, if you remember the trees looked remarkably like broccoli. Um, and the way these have been drawn, this is, this is just a head of broccoli, that's all it is. And then we go and take our middle colour, which was our true green. And we do exactly the same with that. So keep keeping the same pressure and maybe the slightly 
a, a, a similar angle to the, the pencil as well. I nearly said brush there. I don't know where that came from. I haven't used a paintbrush all day today. So, don't know. Sorry. My brain's trying to multitask and failing miserably, clearly. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously my brain's confused. I'm very busy just now because we are in the throes of filming for Cavemus. And it, my, my days are just like wall to wall of basically being in this office because I try and get my own work, like my proper job, finished as quickly as possible. So I've just alternated back to the darkest green here. I'm not doing anything different. I'm just being a bit more careful with this layer. Um, so just taking my time with the coverage a bit more. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm basically trying to shoehorn my own work in and get it done as quickly as possible so that I've got as much of the day as possible to do extra filming because essentially a lot of Cavemus is extra videos but I'm still filming my two videos a week obviously uh, which is why I'm sitting here doing this just now so it's it's very intense and it will be like this up until the start of Cavemas so basically another like four weeks for give or take uh, and I'm, I'm basically by the time you know like in a month's time I will be dead on my feet that's just the way it works but by, it's, no wonder my brain gets confused <laughs> Oh dear, this is the time you where Mr. Gem just brings me food. He just opens the door and hands me food into the game. Okay, so that we've, we're keeping a, a higher ratio of dark green to mid-colour green, we're going to go and do the same thing again. So we're going to have another layer of the darkest green, which is the peacock green here. And you can see the difference already if you compare it to the section that we've already coloured. It's a very, very different shade of green. Okay, so you can see that change and we're using exactly the same pencils. That's the funny thing. So I'm going to stick another layer of the, the true green in here. Uh, again, I'm not, not going to take too much time over it. Just, just cover it. Just do it. And then I'm going to take that dark green again and do the same thing as I did with the background and the previous layer. And I'm just going to follow the line work around there. I am really looking forward to Cavemas this year. I did actually sit and watch last year's live stream. Um, there was a few things that I couldn't recall um, that I just wanted to double check. And bearing in mind I was alcohol impaired at the time as well. I'm definitely not going to remember it like almost a year afterwards. So I was just checking up on a couple of things. But I ended up sitting watching quite a lot of it. And uh, it was very enjoyable to watch back even now um, after all this time. So I, And it's made me really look forward to Cavemas this year. And I hope we have as good a time this year as we did last year. So I'm going to continue this technique on in these other little sections because again that's all part of the same broccoli head. So just by alternating the layers of those two pencils we have given ourselves a substantially different shade of green to what's going on here. So now we've got a, we've got a, like a layer that's even further forward. So for this little bit in the corner here for this broccoli head I am exclusively going to use this uh, this peacock green and I'm just going to build up a couple of layers of that so actually straight colouring with one pencil that's something that I don't do very often so just taking my time to build up some colour here I was reading quite an interesting post online yesterday about the paper in these books and I wasn't aware of it until now but apparently there was loads of problems with the US editions and the paper was um, like it was crinkled and all sorts of things and I, I thought that was uh, quite an interesting piece of information. However, I'm not... I know that a lot of the time, the, the actual type of paper that's used in, uh, in these colouring books is very dependent upon the publisher and what relationships they have with printers. And I don't know if... Um, this is Ebury Press, and I don't know if that's the same publisher that uh, Johanna has been using. So it's through Penguin Random House. Ebury Press is part of Penguin Random House Group of Companies, so it's Penguin. Um, they're, they're a huge company. Um, but I'm just, I wonder what the, the paper choices, uh, you know, what, I'd love to have he heard the conversations about the paper choices. So I know for the US books, uh, they use the same paper as they do in Kirby Rosanna's books. It's just with the same publisher. And Johanna did that on purpose because she, you know, she was like, that's a sure bet then. Um, because obviously the standard of work that comes out of... Uh, of Kirby's coloured pages is phenomenal. So that was what was going on with that. But I don't know, I find the paper really odd in this book. I did not buy Worlds of Wonder. And I'm wondering, wondering, you guys can probably tell me in the comments because I'm sure quite a few few of you would have bought that book. Um, if the paper in this book is the same as that one. Um, it feels very different to 
um, to Johanna's books in the past. And But the, to be fair, the last book of hers that I bought was, I think, World of Flowers. Okay, because I've used a single pencil here, I am going to use my colourless blender. And this is just to give us a different texture and give us, you know, just a bit of variety within these trees and within these specific colours. Uh, so yeah, this is just the same technique as we used for the background in the previous video, which I will link down in the description. That will be the first link in the description, but I'll also stick it on the end card as well. So for the darkest areas, which will, for me, are these um, sections that are closest to us, so the, the, the furthest towards the front, I'm going to bring in an additional pencil and it's probably not going to come to any surprise to any of you that it is going to be Indigo Blue, which is PC901. And again, I will show you that in my swatch book in case you don't have these pencils. A very dark inky blue. Okay, so for this top section here, we're going to take our indigo, our indigo blue. I think I'm going to turn this round. I'm very aware that because this is quite smooth paper and we're with Prismacolors, I might, I'm going to be doing a lot of smooshing about and I don't want any colour transfer to uh, to ruin this for me. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it this way and then my hand's not even on the picture. Uh, yeah, so uh, similarly, like we did with the peacock green in this section, I have got my indigo and I am just going to put down uh, a light but even, or as even as possible, an even layer of colour. And then we can go to our peacock green here. So we're going to do the, we're going to do the same technique. We're going to do this alternating technique like we did in this section here, but we're just going to do it with the indigo and the peacock instead. So we've gone down a, a step to a darker color. Think of it as a set of stairs and the indigo blue is at the bottom because it's the darkest and the light green is at the top because it's the palest. We're going down, going down the stairs with our pencils. That's what we're doing here. We're going down the stairs. So because the indigo blue is such a dark colour, it's going to give us a much deeper shade here. And that is just going to add to that sense of depth in these treetops here. Now the trick is here when we're doing this, and I notice it particularly on this paper, we want to keep nice light layers if you press too hard, which is the temptation, if you're not necessarily getting a rich lay down the way you would in some toothier papers, uh, the, the, the impulse is to start pressing harder and that is what you do not want to do because that's only going to make things worse. And we want to be able to build this up a bit deeper because right now it's kind of stuck in the, the mid-tone throws here and that's not what we're after. So try and avoid the impulse to start pressing down really hard because you're actually not helping matters, you're just making things worse for yourself and you're going to get more and more frustrated and you're not going to end up getting that nice depth of colour that you actually really wanted to begin with. So I'm now assessing this, I'm looking at this next to this colour and this colour and this is very similar so we need to go, um, go in with a little bit more indigo um, because this is looking remarkably similar to the, the just the peacock. Um, I would say I'm at medium pressure now. And I'm paying a lot more attention to coverage as well. See, this is better, much better. So that's the kind of depth we're looking for. So now if I put one last layer of the peacock green over the top of that, that's looking pretty rich now. I like that a lot. Right, there we go. Uh, so you can see again now we've... But with the introduction of one extra pencil, we've managed to create this much richer and darker section here. Now because there's a couple of bits like this side by side, I'm not going to use my colourless blender on this section, I'm just going to leave that texture layer, like the texture of the paper, and what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same with this section here, but we'll use the colourless blender on that so it will look slightly different, still the same ballpark, but slightly different. So this is a great way to get variation without having to use like 9 million pencils, and uh, even though I'm not someone that uses a colourless blender very often, I have them for a reason and this is exactly the kind of thing so I'd highly recommend getting yourself one of obviously not one like that but that's what a new one <laughs> looks like. Okay, okay, so we've got that all coloured in now so I'm going to grab this colourless blender and let's see how much of a difference it makes. Okay, closer up it does look a little different, uh, not, dr not dramatically so, not dramatically so. Okay, the other thing I just want to do in this little section here is I want to add in some um, some accents like we did in the part below. It's up to you if you want to do this or not. I like it just for a bit of interest here and there. So I'm thinking, uh, first of all, like I did last time, I just want to tackle this one here where the um, the candle lights 
going to affect it. So I'm back to my lightest screen. So I'm at the top of my staircase and uh, I'm using this light green. And uh, I'm literally just going to use that section there. And I think that's pretty much as, as much as it's going to be. And um, if I go to my mid green after that, to the true green, I think we can utilise this without having to do much blending because there's quite a lot of more kind of like itty, itty bitty bitties but along here obviously we're going to we're still going to have this sort of shadow so we're, we're kind of going to be blending in anyway so for the for the remainder of this head of broccoli i am going to stick with our true green and use the the shadow color of the peacock green to our advantage here. Now I'm just adding this peacock green in there because there is some stippling there that Johanna has left. Um, it's not for any other reason. Now we've gone through all the techniques, let's get the rest of these <laughs> broccoli heads coloured in and then we can take a look at our tree trunk. So for this section in here, I have opted to make this the same as this section here. So that's the combination of the true green and the peacock green. And it's simply because thinking about the layers and looking at the sections round about, if I was to make this a step darker than here, that would be true green with the blender pencil. Uh, that would be the peacock green with the blender pencil, which would automatically make this the darkest colour which is the peacock green with the indigo. And I think that's that's that would really stand out there. That would be quite jarring to have the dark colour come all the way down around here. So I'm just using a bit of uh, a bit of forward planning here. So it means that I can make these two the solid peacock green and I can also do the same there. And then this one here can be the peacock and the indigo. This is the only thing, I think I mentioned this in the, the background video, but I'm really not enjoying having to sharpen all the time. It's been so long since I've used the Prisma colours, uh, you know, for any sort of length of time. There we go, nice little pointy point there. And I, I've kind of forgotten what it's like to have to sharpen them so much. Same in this little box, this little box, same in this little section here. Just going to go for the old uh, solid peacock colour. I'm starting to get a bit nervous for my, my peacock green pencil, I really am. Oh, because oh, I was just looking to see, right, how am I doing this here? But we're okay, this is going to be the last time it'll be, this is the last section that it's going to be used. Oh no, it's not, I've got this one as well. <laughs> oh no, I can do that as a mixture, that one. This is, all of this, uh, you know, planning and thinking about this is only because if... I have a breakage, it may not be recoverable. And um, I have a spare parrot green and a spare true green, but I, and a spare light green, but I do not have a spare peacock green. That's typical, isn't it? Okay, so I've got my tree tops done now. The one thing that's standing out to me is these sections here that's mixed pencil, particularly this one, they just look a bit, I don't know, out of place because everything else is quite smooth and quite well blended. So I think I'm actually going to take my colourless blender. I'm not going to burnish this here though. I'm going to use quite a light pressure and I just really want to um, soften up some of the, the grain of the paper here. That's it, because that's what's standing out to me. You know, like just cover up a little bit of the white of the paper. I don't want to lose the texture necessarily. Okay, so now that our treetops are finished, or our broccoli, or whatever you would like to call them your good self, we're going to focus on these tree trunks, and I am purely focusing on the actual trunky part. We'll deal with it, we'll deal with everything else in another video. Um, I'm kind of tight for time today as well. So first of all, let's talk about the colours I've chosen. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Okay, the first colour is the beige sienna, which is this one here. Let's zoom in a little bit here just so that you can see. I saw a very, very light pinkish brown. That's quite a warm tone as well. The next colour I have chosen is sandbar brown, which is a bit of a contrast over here. So this is a darker shade and I would say that's a very neutral brown as well. It does have a hint of sort of a greenish yellow in it. Um, if you look at it next to the sepia, it does look considerably different. 
I'm also going to use the sepia as well, a much cooler colour. I'm really using that for detail and shadows and also the chocolate as well because I just want to bring a little bit of warmth to this. Also some of them looking alarmingly short. <laughs> We're really not doing very well with this, are we guys? Ah, oh, it just goes to show you that my Prisma colours are well used. Really simple and straightforward as the first step always is. I want to take my beige sienna and I want to cover the entire trunk of both of these trees. So I'm going to start up here and I am just going to make my way across very gradually. Now what I wanted to do here is because we have a lot of colour going on in this background, which I have tried to keep to a particular palette, you will have noticed, but there's a lot going to be going on in the foreground as well. So I wanted there to be some sort of neutrality and I plan on doing that with the tree branches and also with the vines that are snaking about in between the trees and this background colour because they're all over the background. We don't want the picture to be a total assault on the eyeballs because that's going to get quite painful. Um, so if we keep the actual tree trunks and these vines fairly neutral and inconspicuous, it's just going to give the eyes a nice resting place on the picture. And thankfully as well, Johanna has left quite a little bit of um, hatching and texture on the tree trunks so we don't have to create our own texture we can just literally follow her lines and that'll still make the tree trunks interesting you know we're not talking about a block of color but it's not going to be busy busy by putting in things like um, you know like a proper uh, wood grain pattern anything like that I say there's way way too much going on now some people lo love really busy cluttered pictures with you know lots of different things to look at and that's all very fair and well but I am much more of the, the aesthetically pleasing variety and I like things to coordinate, not necessarily be all matchy-matchy, um, but I like things to look well put together and as if they've been composed rather than just colouring everything. And I think that kind of shows now just in my, in my colouring in general because I do tend to stick to certain colour schemes and this will probably be teetering on the very outside of that just because there's quite a lot going on in this picture. Um, you know, there's lots of little bitty bits like, you know, the, like the stereo and the blankets and the, the pictures that have been pinned to the tree. So it might not follow suit quite as much here, but by keeping the trees in the background in the same palette and keeping this neutral palette for the um, some of the foliage, etc., I'm hoping to try and hold on to that sort of principle and that aesthetic. So I'm going to grab this sandbar brown for this as well as this beige sienna. And I'm going to take this secondary layer of beige sienna and I'm going to put it down around the halo. So if we think about this area here where we've already used our lightest pencils. So probably to about there I would think. And with the chocolate brown I'm just going to follow that halo round. And we will just fade that into that beige sienna. Now we will be using the beige sienna elsewhere. Um, it's not completely out. We'll be using it in combination with our other pencils here. But that's covering the lightest area. So we're keeping that halo effect and it's in keeping with the actual halo that we've drawn in the background there. You can see you can almost draw right around that with your finger. We're going to take cues from the artist and then we're going to add in a few bits of our own just for fun. So I'm sticking with my chocolate brown here. And this first branch here has a lot of hatching on it. There's a lot of cross hatching there. So I'm going to colour that part in and I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to go down this other section of the bow. So I'm going to use my sepia to cover this hatched area. Sepia, sepia is really here as the shadow colour. Now, on to, although it's quite a cold shade on top of the chocolate, which is very warm, it's going to come out quite warm. So we're going to blend that together. And then we're just going to mix in that little bit of chocolate there. So we've got a little knot going on here. So this is where I'm going to grab the sandbar brown. And I'm literally going to colour that knot in with the sandbar brown because we want it to look slightly different from what's going on around about it. And then I'm going to take this beige sienna and in this area, which is obviously raised around about the part we've just coloured, I'm going to take that beige sienna and I'm going to go all the way around. And then I'm going to go back to my chocolate brown and I'm going to start to join this up to our knot. So we're working around that area there. And we're joining into our area here where we have already put some pencil down. I'm generally taking the rule that I'm putting a little bit more of a darker colour underneath. Now that technically doesn't go with the rule of the light source but that's okay. You don't have to be precise with these things. That's what colouring's all about. 
So I'm just adding chocolate on the bottom half and then I'm going back with my beige sienna and on the upper half of these bows I'm adding a little bit of that and I'm not going for solid colour here, I want there to be lots of texture again just as before. So that, that bow itself is looking pretty good. If we want to go one step further, this is entirely up to you. And I would highly advise you to keep the sandbar brown and the sepia pencil with pointy points as much as possible. I know that's not always terribly possible with Prismacolors, but we're going to do our best. So if you want your darker areas darker and you want, you know, a bit more of, a bit more drama. Um, now again, I'm thinking being further away from the candlelight. So maybe not down here, like where I'm not as there. But up here, I can pop a little bit of sepia just along this bottom edge here. Just to make it that little bit darker. There we go, that was a tiny tickle of pencil, but it made all the difference. And then with this sandbar brown, the marks that are on the tree trunks, so like these ones here that aren't technically hatching or shading. Um, these are just texture marks. So I'm gonna exaggerate those with the sandbar brown. I'm gonna pick up on them and I'm really gonna like mess about with them and just go with that texture. But because the sandbar brown's relatively innocuous, it's not gonna stand out. Um, you know, it's not like using a completely different color. So we're just gonna work our way around now. And we can do exactly the same with these two branches here as we've done over here. There so our burnt sienna is doing all the work here. I really like this chocolate colour in the Prismacolor set. It's a really nice, rich, warm brown. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to give this side the same treatment and then we're going to look a little bit more at this, uh, at this trunk section in just a little minute. Okay, so we've got our nice area now. So if you look at that as a whole, you can see that this area looks slightly more lit up and we've got the darker parts down the sides. So we need to kind of bear that in mind as we come down to this tree trunk and there'll be less and less areas with the as much of this uh, beige sienna as we've got here. Uh, yeah, so we, we want to keep that in mind, so we're going to be veering more towards the chocolate and the sepia, but still using that sandbar brown in various places, which to be fair, there's stuff on the trunk, so we're not going to have many of those. And we'll just stop at this step, that's a really good place to stop. But I said to you, I was going to exaggerate all of these lines. And then what I'm going to do is grab the sepia, and I'm going to work that in and just at that corner there, and maybe down this side a little bit. I'm not going to use too much of it though, because... I don't want this to be really dark straight off the, you know, from the get-go. I'm trying to keep an up and down motion here as much as possible as well. Just thinking about the, you know, if you think about the texture and the grain on most trees, it tends to run up and down the way. Now this section down here is quite, it's getting quite interesting down here. So let's go, uh, let's go layer of chocolate again. Now because we're heading towards the bottom, I don't see any light sources down here. This is all cups and plates and, and there's no fire or anything like that. So I'm assuming that this would look slightly darker down here. Now I can see under the steps here, there's actually marks that look like, um, you know, as if they're casting a little bit of a shadow. So we'll, we'll pop some sepia in there and we'll maybe blend it out a little bit. I don't think it needs to be that, that serious. <laughs> and the bottom of the bed here as well, there's some stippling there. And there's also a couple of lines. Don't be scared to exaggerate some of these features that, that the artists put in. Sometimes that can be quite fun. And it also gives you, uh, you know, a little bit more variation in the picture as well. I think these look like slices of orange. I can't get that, you know, like now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. It reminds me of a Terry's chocolate orange if I colour them in brown. Terry's chocolate orange. For those of you outside of the UK, you haven't lived until you've had a Terry's chocolate orange. A chocolate orange is basically orange flavoured chocolate, but it's shaped like an orange and it has segments and it's all stuck together. So it's in a, in a foil wrapper and you tap it and it makes all the segments fall apart. I'm trying to avoid, the t I love the way these pictures are taped to the tree there. That's hilarious. Sort of haphazardly stuck there. That must be good sellotape, I'm not sure how good sellotape is at sticking things to tree trunks. Okay, in this bottom section now, I this is where I feel like things are lacking a little bit. I just feel there should be more detail here. So I'm going to start with my sepia pencil and these lines here that Johanna has left, there's like these little lines. I am going to bring one of those all the way up there. So it looks like we've got some, um, you know, some the start of some tree roots here. 
Uh, you wouldn't have a solid mass of tree trunk like that. That would be very, very unusual without some sort of bumps or crenellations. So uh, you don't need to take it, you know, like really far because these roots could obviously start much further down, which is fine. But it's just very strange that there wouldn't be any texture there. I'm kind of thinking about this as I did with these top parts up here where I had the darker part on one side. So I'm going to take my chocolate. And I think I would actually quite like this to have because we've got this lighter section here that we've kind of made up all by ourselves but I think I'm going to pop in some of that beige sienna just on the edge almost like a highlight as if there's light shining down onto it and I think that'll be a nice sort of you know bit of variation here so I'm back to my chocolate now to join these together and then we can just carry on and bring this chocolate all the way up because we've got this natural sort of stopping point under this uh, orange segment here We've we've now got broccoli heads and orange segments. This is a very um a very foodie tree. This isn't it? <laughs> it's so cute because you can see the way it curls all the way around. You know, and obviously the steps to the actual bed are like up and behind here. I love stuff like that. It makes me really happy. And this part here where the grass is will make that quite subtle. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of shadow under these drawings as well. So the likes of here, I want the um the lightest part to be in the middle. I was thinking that this might come to an apex, you know, but it's facing towards us, so the apex is going to face this way rather than this way. So let's see. Again, like the, I'm probably overthinking this a bit too much. Like I don't have to be this precise or even that, you know, pernickety about things. It's just to give this a bit more dimension. That's basically all I'm trying to do here. I'm really enjoying myself here, can you tell? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay, so we'll make this the high point in this one here, and we'll just sort of blend that into that chocolate colour. So, again, I'm just going to try and sort of accentuate this sepia a little bit because it's disappearing in there, and I want that line to be fairly noticeable just so that we can see the, the, the different sections. Because you know, we're, we're working away at this, we want our hard work to be, to be seen. Now, here, this is different because um, there, obviously we've nailed this. Terry's chocolate orange into the into the tree trunk, which I don't know. I, I feel kind of sorry for the tree. Um, so I'm not bothered about taking the this uh, beige sienna colour all the way up because that ridge has kind of got to start somewhere. And although it probably will go up into the tree, a lot of this is covered up, so we don't really have to worry about it all that much, which is great, great for what we need. And uh, I don't want them all at the same height as well. So this one down here, here we are. So just leave a little gap there, a tiny little gap. And I'm just going to pop some beige sienna in there. So that will be the start of the middle ridge here. Triangle there. Uh, just like a suggestion of a ridge. Because I don't want this. It's looking quite uniform and that's what I don't want. It's a tree. Very rarely anything uniform about the peaks and troughs of a tree trunk. Well, I mean, there is with certain type of trees, but I'm not going to split hairs, you know what I mean. We fiddle about with these and work away with these for ages. This is the point where most of the time you guys don't see, you see a little bit of it. Um, and I usually poke fun at myself for it because I know technically I'm finished, but I'm not finished. Um, right, okay, so let's uh, let's just zoom out and take a look at the entire tree. Oh, so you can see how the warm colours are, uh, they're nice and neutral but they are complementing what's going on and I've added just a little bit of interest at the bottom here. It's maybe a wee bit on the stripy side but it's quite a fun picture so do you know what, I'm absolutely okay with that. I'm going to stop it there. The same technique and all these little bitty bits that I've talked about here is exactly what's going to be done on the other side. So I will make this tree trunk my homework for our next colouring video. That is it for today guys. If you have made it that far you're still listening so if you wouldn't mind taking a second to hit that like button smash it like a boss that would be great such a small action from you has such a huge impact on the channel uh, for me so that would be much appreciated and this picture is just an absolute joy to behold I'm, I'm really enjoying myself here the next video for this will be in a week or so's time so you can keep your eyes peeled for that just want to thank you very much for watching thanks for coming and hanging out and i'll see you back in the cave on thursday for another video so have a great day everyone and bye for now